And we always have to get to that why, not just the do, but we have to get to the why yes. of mm -hmm. why we're telling them to do the things right. that we're asking them to do. I want to actually break down the difference between discipline and discipleship. What does discipline look like? And I like that visual that you give of, of that X and transitioning from one to the other. I've never thought of it that way before, but can we break down a little bit more the difference between discipline and discipleship? So uh, discipline is, as I said, includes training in the sense that I'm trying to help them understand how to behave. Primarily, discipline is more of a behavioral modification, which doesn't last very long. But I just want you to, to act different. I want you to, to understand what is right and what is wrong. And usually that means whether it's spanking for little tiny kids or as they get older, giving them, taking away their uh, privileges or freedoms that they like and say, sorry, you can't do that because you're abusing this. Uh, whatever it is, we are providing external motivation to get them to follow the rules and choose the right thing. But as we know, external motivation just doesn't last long enough. And it, and it doesn't accomplish what we want, which is discipleship, which is right. people following Christ. So discipleship is that relationship, right? Where I am walking with my children. This is Deuteronomy uh, 6, 4, right? So we love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we walk with them. So we're teaching that to our children while we sit down, while we rise up, uh, walking by the way, everything that we're doing. And so then we're talking about God, we're talking and we're exemplifying it and, and helping them to follow Christ. And of course, you know, we'll mention as we go, just some of the other ways, how do we disciple them? Yeah. You know, when we discipline our kids, one of the great privileges that we have as Christian parents is that it's not just for the sake of getting them to act right. It's not just disciplining them and saying, okay, this is exactly what you're supposed to do, but it's training them. And that's where the discipleship part comes in, right? It's during the discipline, sitting and talking to them and helping them to understand this is what God's word says. This is why, this is the why. And, and we always have to get to that why, not just the do, but we have to get to the why yes. of mm -hmm. why we're telling them to do the things right. that we're asking them to do. Now it could be something simple, do the dishes. Why? Because mom said so. And you're to obey mom, yeah. you know, but there often is a, a much bigger why around what we're instructing our kids to do mm -hmm. and teaching them and training them up sure. to do. And so I love the opportunities that I have with my girls to just sit and speak to their hearts. And that's really what you're talking about, right? Is speaking to the heart of our child, not just for the sake of getting them to act a certain way, but so that we can that's exactly move right. into the discipleship phase of their life. And you know, I'm I'm going to jump right into one of the tips because sure. you just hit on it, um, which is teach your children God's purpose for life and how everything fits into it. Mm. So one of the ways that we help them become self-motivated, one of the ways we help them follow Christ is by doing what you said, answering the why. Yeah, It's funny because that's the number one question in my house. Why, 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 why? It's like, do this, do that. Why? Why do I have to do that? And parents get tired of it and it's like, just do it, you know, yeah. or or because I said so. But the reality is we have to answer that question. Like you said, we have to say the real why. Right. You know? And there are, there's a real why. And so if my, if we say God has called us, just like we said, Deuteronomy 6, to love him. And then we add, as Jesus did later, to love people. Mm -hmm. Then you give them a context for understanding why am I doing what I'm doing? This yeah. is a way that I can honor God in the stewardship of what he's given me. Or this is a way I can love and serve the people he's put around me, which honors him. And there are things I can do that help people come to know him. And so the purpose of life, which is discipleship, right? Yeah. Um, and answering the why in the little things that you do is why they become motivated. Because it makes sense to them. And it's exciting to them. And if they think, like you said a minute ago, we're cleaning up the house because people are coming over. Why? Because we're going to minister to them. We're going to encourage them. We're going to talk to cry to about them, to cry uh, about Christ to them. Well, our home matters, doesn't yeah. it? And so, you know, that makes sense to them. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I love that period of, you know, I, with my older daughter, I feel like we're definitely more in the discipleship phase with her mm -hmm. and with my younger daughter, who's 11. And you hit right on the, the perfect age is that we are transitioning from that discipline mm -hmm. to discipleship. But 
I, you know, it's so funny. I remember when Brooklyn was several years younger and I would hear, it was before she was a, a teenager and I would hear parents of teens talk about the late night talks. And mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, sure. I never, like, I don't remember staying up late at night talking to my parents. I probably did. I just don't recall that. But sure enough, and you've got several teenagers in your family. And so I'm assuming it's the same in your house. Mm -hmm. 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, mom, come lay with me. I want to talk to you about something. And then, you know, and I'm trying to hold my eyelids open with a toothpick. Before now? <laughs> right. <laughs> but man, the discussions and the, and the yeah. things that we get to talk about and the heart, right. just being able to hear her heart. And my 11 year old's not quite there yet. We do talk about things that are deep, but not like I do with my 16 year old. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then when you think through their adult years, you spend so much more time discipling your kids because even when they're adults, I'm sure with your 23 year old, who's your oldest, you still probably disciple that child. Is that a boy or a girl? But your oldest is a son oldest or not? Is a girl. Mm -hmm. Is a girl. Okay. So you probably still, you and your wife both still spend time discipling her, even though she's not in your home. So there would be no discipline right. needed there.